It's just like an open history book. You can tell lots of stories about past Londoners' life. You don't hear the sirens, you don't hear the planes. It's really peaceful, relaxing. You arrive to the river, the first thing you see is, is there anybody else? Because you want to be the first. Your mind is free, the time is flying. At the moment is my mindful time of the week. Hi, my name is Alessio Cecconi. I am clearly Italian by the accent. My name is Cristina and I am 33 years old. I am originally from Lithuania. I am 43 years old and I moved to London 13 years ago for work. Mudlarking is the closest thing to an addiction that I've experienced. Mudlarking, for me, that's passion, my hobby, and all my free time, I'm checking the tides. Mudlark refers to any passionate treasure hunter that has a permit from the Port of London Authority and that spends time during low tides searching for artifacts in the foreshore. As a child, I loved to go to the forest and search for mushrooms. So now when I came here to London, mudlarking is something that reminds me of my childhood, what I love to do. I started mudlarking during lockdown where you felt trapped in your house. The river becomes a moment where your brain switches off. And for me, really, that's the biggest take of mudlarking. I've just found this object. It has been hand carved. You can see the different marks of a sort of a blade that was used to do this. I don't know if it was maybe a, a for, for rope making, for fishing rope. And given the area, it's probably 300 years old, 350 years old. So that's, that goes to my cabinet. Okay, let's continue. Oh, corals! Surprise, surprise! These were, these most likely have to come from the Caribbean. They're not fossil, but they're definitely a few hundred years old. And these are all coral colonies. Look at them. When you go in the river, you need to be aware of several, you know, dangers or aspects of the experience. I always take my knee pads and because the river is dirty, you need to use gloves to don't catch any infections. Once I got stuck into the mud up to my waist, I was alone, the tide was coming back. I was so, so scared. I managed to come out somehow, I don't know, using my hands, like came out from the mud and my feet were frozen and that was such an experience for me. I really love finding uh, coins and I have found some 17th century traders' tokens and medieval coin. My favorite, favorite thing is a knife that I found a year ago. And I really like it because it's made both by iron and it's really special to me because this handle is hand carved. And all of a sudden you kind of start thinking, wow, you know, all these things that happened are happening today, happen in the past. And I think mudlarking in a way teaches you a lot about history. And by learning what happened in history, you start thinking more about what's happening today. And the moment where you spot something um, that could be something, you know, you like, you stop, it's like your heart stops. For someone that was just a rubbish and for us, that's a treasure. I'm enjoying this peaceful and relaxing time because I live in a city which is overpopulated <laughs> and it's busy and then you just go down to the foreshore and then you see it completely different world. And it's a very calming, calming experience. I think the thing that will never tire me in the mudlarking experience is that you never know what you're going to find next. And the river has so much history, especially in central London. Every time you go, you really hope to find something that will tell you a new story you have not heard before. And it becomes like this Sherlock Holmes, Miss Marple, Indiana Jones in your room experience that is extremely fascinating. Mudlarking really teaches that you don't need to be a king to leave a mark in history.